Welcome back, everybody, from Prague, Czech Republic. It's time to find out who's going to be our second EU finalist in BlizzCon later this year between Pavel and Nairio. My name is Frodan. I've been casting alongside Nimsh and Lothar, who's going to be presenting to you the next series and ultimately finding out who is going to be ticket number two. We just found out that Tice is going through. Lothar, you must be very happy about that. I'm very happy. As the, the player of G2 sure. also and as the manager of the team, I'm really happy that I will have one of my players there. And now we have to let Orton support Life Coach to also get that goal. Uh, but in the meantime, there's also European Championships going on. So, I mean, Thais will be battling for the title too, right? Everyone wants to win Absolutely. the prize here. So it's not about only about going to BlizzCon. It's also about being the European champion, the first European champion in the game. Yeah. Let, let's not get it too ahead of it, though. Ultimately, they are playing for the next stage. It's great to be European champion, but uh, to be world champion is the ultimate goal here. So being able to get that berth, super critical. And between these two players, especially for someone like Nyria, who came very close last year as one of the top seeds in Europe, but was unable to get over that hump, uh, you know, I, I really think that this is a year for redemption. Not only because Nyria uh, historically has been very close but very far, at the same time, he hasn't been able to actually have a great tournament performance yet. Yep. That, that's absolutely true. And uh, Nyria himself mentioned that last year he wasn't that much prepared. This this year he is coming with all the preparation he has. Mm -hmm. And uh, same story with Thais. Like, Thais didn't make it last year, he made it right now. So Nyria, maybe he'll try to do the same thing and, you know, win versus Pavel. That's right. So we talked a little bit about Nyria. Thank you for bringing up Pavel as well. He's going to be his opponent. Uh, we don't know too much about uh, Pavel outside of what's been discovered in the past month. Uh, for one thing, he's the youngest player. Player here. He's 17 years old, he's from Russia, and he's very quiet. In fact, he reminds me a lot of Kalento in terms of he's, a, he's very few on words, but very big with his play style. Uh, he makes very few mistakes from a lot of the players, say, and uh, one thing I do want to point out is that he's the only player who is represented here in the top eight who finished number one in the season. And that was, I believe, in February earlier mm -hmm. this year, or maybe March, um, where he finished number one on the EU ladder. Very impressive for a young age. Absolutely. Yeah, very impressive, and uh, at the same time, this is his first broadcasted performance, right? Pax. He was, he was at PAX. Uh, sorry, PAX. Um, but he had also a chance to be at Definity, and he did miss that because of the visa issues. But now, fortunately for him, he's here with the most important tournament of the year. It's so amazing that uh, someone so young is playing in this big tournament. And, you know, Pavel, just uh, in a couple of years, how good will he be? And he is a possible European champion, you know? Like, today, he can just go to, to BlizzCon and qualify for that as well. Yeah, he is one of the best already, considering that uh, he's con he's been one of the top point owners through ladder. And we'll see if he's able to continue it. We don't know too much about his team empire as well, but they do have assortment of players that can help him prepare. Can he stack up against Nyria, who's been doing very well? In fact, his series against Life Coach, he looked very comfortable. It didn't seem like he was uh, struggling at all. He wasn't nervous. Um, so I think the ball is in Nyria's court here. But we, at the same time, we don't really know too much about his lineup either. We haven't seen Pavel just yet. All right, well, there you go. It looks like they're playing a very similar lineup, and that could be what ultimately decides what happens through the mirrors once again. Yeah, the Trinity. I still, even though those classes we've seen before, I really like the matchups. Uh, mirrors are interesting. Druid versus Patron is interesting, and you always want to see the handlock. Is Patron going to kill the handlock uh, and go for the giants and the demons, or is the demon not going to just uh, deal enough damage? Well, it can still be a different warlock, right? We don't have the um, the knowledge about the deck at all, so we can guess, but. Most of the time it's handlock because it is the most powerful answer to the current metagame state. Absolutely, and also I've, I believe that Pavel was playing handlock in the qualifier stages. Mm -hmm. So bringing Zoo is a bad choice. Oh, Zoo just fall down so badly in the, in the in like last two months, let's say. Um, normally when we, play, when we were playing ladder, almost every other warlock or even three third uh, uh, two three uh, uh, of the um, of the ladder was filled with zoo, and now nowadays that's a rare sight to behold. All right, well, we'll see if it ends up being that case. I'm going to put my vote for the handlock, but I also want to ask for you guys: Who do you think is going to BlizzCon? It's going to be Pavel and Iria. Nipsh? Pavel. Just Pavel. Just quick answers. You don't yes. even really. It's just a gut feeling. They have the same lineup. We don't really know Pavel's small nuances, but you're going to go with him. Yeah, absolutely. I think Pavel is uh, so consistent, and uh, he's in a role this year. Um, he doesn't show that many emotions, so he was winning in the qualifiers. He's a great ladder, pl ladder player. All right, Lothar? I would say with Pavel, too. 
All right, well, two votes for Pavel. I'll just throw in my camp for Nyria. Game number one is about to begin. We have Druid versus the Warrior. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank, Thank you so much, Frodan. All right, Patient versus Druid. We talked about this match a couple of times before, but uh, Lothar, would you like to pick Druid or Warrior? I would always go for the Warrior here. I um, mean, um, there are so many cards that can just switch, just make a switch in the situation on the board and making the uh, Warrior player instantly win the situation. Let's say about an example, turn five, Patron with Inner Rage and Whirlwind. Most of the Druids will have no option to deal with that, uh, with that kind of board. And after that, when you can make a comeback the same turn, you just fall further and further away. And there's no, no way of coming back because Druid has problem problem with dealing with multiple creatures with higher than two health. So Naria, uh, he mulliganed his whole hand. What was he looking for? He was looking for the mana acceleration and he got the wild girl. Very important draw here because he can curve out into minions that will pressure the warrior. The problem is, he's not exactly having those perfect minions for the ten, ten basically three, but with four mana. He was looking for a pilot shredder, he was looking for um, well, basically, style to each other. Because uh, most of the players are not using more 4 drops, right? Because the keeper isn't exactly a 4 drop. Yeah, that's true. I like how Pavel was smiling a moment ago. Maybe he is happy about this matchup. As you mentioned, you, you would like to be a warrior. Yes. Uh, even though I like being true in that matchup, still, uh, he possibly thinks his hand is good. Yeah, he thinks that, and I don't blame him for replacing the weapon with no effect, so he basically threw away one of his cards in his hand, but at the same time, the Fear Warrex doesn't have such huge impact in this uh, in this matchup as it would normally have, so I'm blaming him for making that change. Uh, it will be kind of punished, of course, by the Harrison Jones, because um, as we talked with, with Rodan in, uh, in two, two matches ago, uh, Harrison Jones is one of the most important things um, in this matchup. You can steal the tempo from Warrior because the, the weapon allows you to uh, save mana to gain board control and use your health instead of mana. And that's very important. Well, that's why the statistics say that Druid is actually winning more because of this Harrison Jones. But there is a uh, Corsair that's a recent addition to the Patron decks. Uh, we've seen Corsair before, but there was mm -hmm. a, a period of time where Corsair just absolutely disappeared from Patron lists. But now, with uh, Druid being so popular, people started bringing Corsair to just counter. Uh, well, it makes the matchup a bit better. Yeah, it makes the matchup a little bit better um, because it's another zero mana creature that can, can charge and it's also another body to buff the Farting Berserker. And it's also great in the um, aggressive matchups. I mean, in current meta game, we don't have a lot of aggro decks. There are more, all of the decks that we're currently seeing are more mid range, are more control. So the early, um, early taunt is not that important. But at the same time, there's a possibility someone will just. You know, bring an ag aggro deck and take everyone, uh, everyone like you know, off guard, right? Absolutely. Uh, by the way, Pavel didn't kill Sylvanas because he didn't have a great, clear way to do it, and attacking into it and attacking with the Corsair that would be too much. So we just uh, try to develop the board, have a bit more uh, flexibility. If Sylvanas steals one of the small minions, it doesn't matter that much. But Nyria has the answers, the silence, and the swipe as well. Nyria just puts fresh. a lot of pressure yeah. on, on Pavel. I mean, the reason why he didn't use the weapon, I think, is he values his last death spite so much that he thinks that maybe I will, I will deal with the Sylvanas somehow differently and I will, I will save my death spite for the patron I have already in my hand. But at the same time, the amount of pressure that you see from Nerea's side is making him uncomfortable. You have to do something about it. And yeah. About uh, Pavel has, well, this hand is everything he needs. Now, the big question is, mm -hmm. do you survive next turn? Because there is yep. seven damage on board. Uh, there needs to be eight from Nyria, and, and that's, that's exactly that's, it. That's exactly it. A swipe and a cat. Pavel took the gamble. He hoped there is no way to kill him, but he concedes, and Nyria takes game number one versus Pavel with the Druid deck. Mm -hmm. too, too much damage. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the thing. Like, that, that's how we play this matchup. So if you guys have problems versus Patron on ladder, just learn from this game. Uh, those are the best European players fighting here. And this is how you play Druid versus Patron. You just have to be really aggressive, do as much damage as possible. When you think about this game in particular, you can see that Pavel didn't armor up once. The warrior class is being known for, you know, being tanky, yeah. tanky, being, having like 50 HP, 60 HP in a match. And in this situation, we played nine turns, and Pavel didn't have either armor smiths 
or he didn't use uh, he didn't have the time to use his to utilize his mana as armor points so he wasn't really you know dragging himself away from uh, Druid's reach and that was crucial to finish the game on turn 9 right absolutely but on the other hand if Nairia wouldn't have 8 points of damage on that specific turn Pavel had lethal next turn with the yep. patrons after a turn and double were in the fact. I really like how Pavel plays. He was playing for the win and not for for just survival. So he was looking forward to like one turn ahead, two turns ahead. He was planning it, and he had a way out out of the game. The problem was uh, the problem was Neria was just faster than him, and that's it. Yeah, that's true. But uh, Pavel is still playing versus uh, versus Neria, and he's still in a good spot. It's, the the first one is obviously important. Mm -hmm. But it's nowhere near winning the whole series. Yes. If you are 2-0, then you can feel really good. Because More then, comfortable, of course. Yeah, absolutely. With one deck, you just have three chances to win. And it's a really good option that you will actually uh, take the win. But with 1-0, well, it's, it's still pretty even. You know, it's even funny that some of the people are arguing that sometimes winning with a particular deck the first game is even kind of not that great, maybe even worse then saving it for later. Maybe you should have won with a different deck because you have other matchups like, that are better and you, you could have just swing the favor uh, on your side, but you just, you know, secured the deck and you can't play it anymore, right? Yeah, that's true. All right, game number two is starting and we are seeing good hands from both players. Pavel got double Wild Grove Mulligan 1, which is like a, a good thing. What do you think about the Lothar? No, of course, you don't need two Wild Groves when you have already Innervate in your hand and his his end is looking amazing. He can innervate Emperor next turn, which is a pain to deal with uh, as a Warlord player because you have to deal 5 damage by playing cards like Dark Bomb, Dark Bomb, or, or Dark Bomb, Dark Bomb. Or... <laughs> is there anything that Naria can do to the Emperor? No, that, that's, that's, that's basically the, on the silence. But it still leaves a 5-5 five, five minion on the board, which is a pain, but this time physical for the, for the Warlord, right? So this also allowed um, Pavel to be on cube with a minion and a spell if he wants to. And using the ref as a, as a cycle is practically, you know, required to refill the hand after you use the spot taken by Innervate. Well, this definitely looks good for Pavel, but uh, coming back to Naria, what, the, what tools are available to him? He has the Giant, so he can play the Giant. He has the Void Caller with the Void Caller, and he also has the Ancient Watcher with Shadow Flame. Mm -hmm. so he has some tools to contain the board, maybe not next turn. Uh, he needs to, some, to pack some pressure. Oh, there is Twilight Trick as well. Twilight being draw, drawn by Pavel, but I don't, I'm not exactly thinking you should go for it. Well, it's still better for Nyria if he has Void Caller silenced. Because if that would be a Twilight Trick and there is a silence, it's just silence, yes, hero power. I, I was just thinking about Giant instead, you know? Well, the Giant is uh, mostly played on 5 and when you just tap and play it for free. Mm -hmm. So, normally a lot of players think about it that uh, I play my 4-drop and then on 5 I play Giant as a free drop. Because if I play Giant on 4, then on 5, maybe it will not be that easy to play the 4-drop and having 1 mana left. Mm -hmm. one, one thing I did kind of dislike about the last turn from Pavel was the fact that he went for the Shade of Max Ramos instead of for the Druid of the Claw. I mean, I get the idea to maybe get out of the range of Hellfire or use it to trade it right now, because you know, if there will be a Shadow Flame or Hellfire, the Shadow of the has no use at all. So, he, basically, Shade is the best in this matchup when it trades for a way bigger minion when it comes to mana-wise, right? If it kills, an example, a, a Giant or a Twilight Drake, which is, you know, not So we want to side. play Shade early. Yes, but not in this situation when there was like a really good turn for the Druid of the Cloud to pressure your opponent, right? Because you can just you know, maybe finish the game, but you're lacking the swipe, you're lacking the Savage Roar, so it's really a... Uh, well, a, I'm sure a, that what he's, call. what he's thinking is that he wants to conceal the damage, so double Druid of the Claw is potentially 8 points of damage on turn 8. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have mm -hmm. the Savage Roar yet, he doesn't have the Force of Nature, so he wants to, to use them to, to get, gain that punch to finish Nairia, but... By the way, if Lavko would be playing this game, I think that will really bug him with the, with the ropes still on the board. That's true. Alright, so is this the Torison? As the Torison, so many cards in hand, and Nairia wants to make his game a bit better. He doesn't expect to die this turn. There's 7 points of damage. If you would have a, a 7 roll, that would be at 17. That's what we have 19. With the Druid of the Claw. Yeah, with the Druid of the Claw. That would be just GG this turn. 
But you can't really play around uh, the best combination. You have to take the risk, and Aria took the risk right here to increase his chances for the rest of the game. Well, you kind of feel threatened right now. You, you see a really big minion in which you can deal with, because you have no more silence, and the silence would effectively be 5 damage this turn. But uh, even after that, what do you do? You don't have enough mana to deal with everything, and you don't have Molten Giants, could, so if your opponent sees that you're not tapping into like 12 mark on your, on your health points, or you just use Healbot, like, like just dropping on the board without really any f follow up, then you're certain that your opponent doesn't have Molten Giants and you can go all in. That's true. And right now there are mo no Molten Giants and that's Healbot. Is that Healbot saying clearly yes. I don't have Molten Giants? Yes, it is. It's like a big red sign, you can do whatever you want, man. Just hit me in the face. I don't have Molten Giants. But then on the other hand, from the Rear's perspective, why do you use Healbot? He was worried about you know, just potentially lethal from next, if, uh, Pavel's next turn. But at the same time, if, it, if there would be like a opportunity to do that, I think that that would happen less turn. So, but yeah, I don't blame him for using the Healbot. It's just, just the downside of this play is just saying to your opponent, I don't have a lot of cards, and I have the other ones. So he basically gave a lot of information about the Molten Giants, a lot of information about the Taunters, and generally he has to be super defensive right now, because his opponent will be pushing every single turn. It seems like Nyria is preparing for Shadow Flame next turn, just uh, having the minions right now, because with the Mountain Giant and Shadow Flame, he will not be able to clear the board, so he didn't go for this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And right now, if he damages the minions that are on board, then a Shadow Flame can rework. Yep, but at the same time, the Shadow Flame doesn't necessarily deal that much damage, right? With the Ancient Ancient Watchers and with four. Giant. Well, well, with Giant, yes, but do you want to lose your biggest threat? It's like a last resort in this situation, right? Can you not? <laughs> well, he has to do something, and there is that double 5-5 five five staring well, at him. You can go Hellfire, Ancient Watcher, Shadow Flame, but at the same time, you can't really play Giant next turn. It's really awkward. This is not a position usually Handlock is in. Well, this matchup, I would say, is good for Druid overall. Yep, of course. And Pavel had an amazing opening with Taurus on turn 3. He still holds those Druids of the Claw. Oh wow, Slash Belcher. I wasn't anticipating this card at all. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like a recurring theme. Sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't, because it's a 5 mana drop and there's a lot of competition. And that mana curve, do you think he's not playing Azurjax? One, one slash Belcher, I would understand. Uh, I mean, the Belcher is not really that great against patrons. And you know, almost everyone will bring the patron deck. And when you think about Azurjax, it's great against Priest. Versus Patron is a bit awkward because it dies, dies to Death Spite. Yeah, it dies to Death Spite, but at the same time it buffs the Swipe. Deal with the patrons. Right. Pavel played the Druid of the Claw in the Ton mode because he still plays around Molten Giants just in case. Or something like a Shadow, a second Shadow Flame would just, just kill it. So he wanted to put the pressure on board and then with Iron Beak. That's a move that you see less and less often because um, more players are valuing, are valuing uh, Silence than before. Like uh, Usually when you, when you saw that kind of matchups like Warlock, I mean Handlock against Contra Warrior against Druid, you really value the body, just on board to pressure your opponent and deal with the armor chips or with like, you know, just uh, making the making the Druid player uncomfortable with the board uh, board state so he would have been he would have been pushed to a defensive position. But in this situation, he's just used as a combat mechanism, which is really great. Yeah, but still Nyria is in dire situation with Dr. Boom for Pavel. That's a huge board. And he still has enough time to draw into the biggest threats. He's playing Wolfhub as well. Sa something like Savage Roar might finish the game really fast. There is a Doom Bird, so that's a, sec that's a demon for the Void Caller. That's something. Well, there's the big game hunter to deal with the Pesca Goblin. But it's not looking great. Because even those 1-1 one, one minions have a lot of potential value, a lot of potential damage that can be dished out with the Savage Roar. 
We're going to see the Hellfire. So that's three damage. The bombs are going to fly. Ooh. Four damage to face. Naria's like, oh my Ooh. god. That was painful to watch. I, I mean, he really wanted the Void Core to be killed. That's, what, that's why he played it first. That's why he wanted to have more targets for the bombs to hit. So he preserves his life points. But it didn't work at all. Yeah, he still took four damage to face. And uh, something like Keeper of the Grove could finish the game. Ooh. But Bubble is just going to see what the... What is a demon? I don't blame him. There was only one card in hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you hope there is nothing to deal with uh, when you play. That's true. There was a chance that there will be nothing in the hand. But now it's kind of looking awkward for Payroll. Yeah, if Nairia, if Nairia can stabilize, potentially. If he can clear the board and... Oh. Whoa! Two big game hunters! He is targeting what the is mirror happening? matches. He is targeting Everyone is just, just playing around around, playing against, oh, playing man. against handlocks. Everyone. Force of Nature is going to finish it. Yeah. Oh, and that's the Force of Nature! Off the top! So Pavel is going to take game Woo! number two versus Nairia. Hold it. But still, I was so close. Oh, <laughs> small BM. Small Pavel's BM from Pavel. Well, he's 17, you know. Absolutely. Wow. And uh, to be honest, this is a really legit move in a high-stakes tournament. You can tilt your opponent by doing that. You would affect them by yeah. DMing them a bit. I think you do. I think you do. This is this might really be affecting your opponent like mindset. His he will be uneasy with going to the next game this might affect his mulligan. Maybe he will do something wrong, maybe he'll just make it a decision too fast because he, he wants to be like, you know. I don't think he I don't think he means anything malicious. I think he just wants to have fun. Like he is he is having fun with Harston right now. Even though he's playing at the European Road to BlizzCon and he might potentially be our European champion, he just he just sits there and, and has fun with Harston. That's great. Yep. Uh, so now both players secure Druid. Yeah. Surprisingly. Not. Because <laughs> everyone is starting with Druid and everyone is securing Druid as the first class. One of the hardest yeah. classes to counter. Uh, yeah, I would say so, because m mana curve efficiency in those, in those decks are just... Change your card advantage into... and into directly by using cards like Innervate, and it's something that's really hard to counter. Absolutely. Okay, for the new players, if they... Usually what, to, what you want to do is just be on cure, play bigger minion each, each turn, present a bigger threat to your opponent and just consistently deal damage each turn and finish your opponent off with a big swing in the form of the combo of the Force of Nature and Savage Draw. So usually it doesn't seem like a co super complicated thing to do, so it's a great for beginners, but at the same time it's an int intricate de deck to tweak against a uh, current metagame. And then we can see that m we saw that many Sludge players Belcher. played Sludge Belchers instead of uh, Azure Drakes. Azure Drakes instead of Spell Sludge Belchers ooze to just increase their chance against patrons. And Harrison Jones, of course, there's a lot of nuances. That's right. Everybody's playing a different Druid deck. And game number three is going to start. No Druids there. There's Handlock versus Patron Warrior. Who do you think is going to take this one? This, this is something interesting because um, most of the time, the patron is really not favored in this match. Usually, the handler takes it with ease. But at the same time, I'm sure that all the patron players here are bringing some adjustments to increase the matchups. Or just forfeit it completely. But I, I would say they will probably be changing the deck to affect the handlock, mirror, uh, handlock matchup more. Oh man, Nairia with the worst possible hand. No, what are you saying? To double silence, double big game hunters against patrons? That's like super insane. All right, so like if somebody is watching this matchup for the first time, I want to mention that Nairia really wants beefy cards. He wants giants. Ooh, he wants that's the demons. <laughs> he doesn't want a 2-3 on 4. He absolutely doesn't want to tap. There is first Drake. But on turn 5, which is awkward, but he utilized one of the, one of the minions and denied a draw for the patron player, which is not that bad. I wouldn't blame uh, Pavel for using the loot portal here, just to play around, let's say, Hellfire, right? Pavel has everything. He has a Torison on turn 5 with the coin, and then he has all the combo parts he needs to play. Will he play the Torison on turn 5? I just think he goes for depth by this turn. This hand is amazing with double Inner Okay, rage. never mind, that's double Inner Rage now. <laughs> yeah. Torison, 
so he can just go for face, ignore the minions for now. Yeah, yeah. that's that's uh, 5, 10, 13 damage from hand next turn. Well, Nairia yeah, has the Ancient Watcher. Even There's the Tarzan for Nairia. He has the Ancient Watcher and Defender Vargas if he wants to um, create a, a Taunt Wall. And then he will also be able to kill Torison, and that's something he absolutely must do. Yeah, but uh, isn't that lethal already? Because he has one weird effect. It is fast. Yeah, yeah it's so, might be lethal actually. Uh, With all the dwarves. You have five damage on board, so. Is it? Am I, or am I mistaken? I'm just counting it. Well, that was maybe possible lethal. Or maybe you will have not enough space on board? No, we should be fine. No, he was he was lacking one attack. Oh, okay. Well, that seems like good lethal for the next turn. Is there anything that Rhea can do to actually survive? Mm, well, he can heal bot. And that's uh, basically it. But he's doing that, so props to him. He will not die in less, in less uh, next turn. So how much damage is there coming from Patrons? Warsong Patron double inner H means that there is two double Patrons wins. with five attack, two, two Patrons with three attack. Uh, he will have full board. Well, he has to sacrifice uh, the two four and one three. He's not using inner H first, so he generates less Patrons. But it yeah, seems like he has it. Well, you don't go for inner H death spite if you don't have lethal on board. And with 23, he needs to deal 28 points of damage with his board in total, just including taunt. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it goes. So the first attack, clear the board, make more, more space for more patrons. And in this situation, that's 10 damage, that's 13 Th damage, 13 and then plus you get 9, 22, 22. 4, 26, 26 weapon attack. Yeah. All right, so Pavel has it GG. with the Patrons and Warsong and Death by Double Inner Rage Whirlwind going for the taunt. And now he just needs to attack with the Dwarves. Were very well played by Pavel. And he, that's impressive that he started the turn so fast. Like he was already, he already knew what he has to do in just to, to deal that amount of damage this turn. Because otherwise he would have been caught by the rope. And Absolutely. maybe miss an attack or two, which we saw with Naria, because Naria was kind of lacking the confidence to do the turn, and Pavel just instantly played, played it. So that's really impressive to do it. That's a lot of experience with the deck, and you know, congrats. Like he won the matchup that usually doesn't favor the patron, right? Absolutely. But on the other hand, Naria's uh, Naria's hand was was awful. Yeah, and it, Pavel it was. It, it really was. It. This is most people say Handlock is winning uh, this matchup. But in Hearthstone, nothing is 100%. There's always some room that you can actually get the cards that you need. And with enough skill, you can make correct choices. And there, Pavel made a correct choice not to attack one turn before, and then he had the lethal next turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Very well played by Pavel. I'm really impressed. And it's so young. It's like next RDU, you might say. Well, RDU is not old, but <laughs> you know, it's just one year difference. But at the same time, they both started 17 year olds. And Powell is already here, so it's That's true. I think he has a bright future ahead. Absolutely. But on the other hand, Nairia played well with the cards that he was dealt. Uh, he just Cause. needs to win two games to win the match. But Pavel just left with his Warlock deck. And if he wins with the Warlock, he is the second player going to BlizzCon. Yeah, it's so close. It's just with, within the grasp of, the, of their hands. And Pavel is almost there. So we'll see how we'll be doing in the last potential, potential last game here. I just love how he's not stressed. He was happy with the patrons just attacking them. Yeah, just, let's go for it. Yeah. Le he's lethal. I, I know how you do it. So. Well, spam patrons, right? For Nairia, there's so much pressure. Oh yeah, it is. Because if you fall down from this match, there will be even more pressure in your next match, because that's like your last chance. Yeah, so, and it's his yeah. second time. For Pavel, it's his face first time. He just qualified. He's playing Carson. He likes Carson. He's going, uh, doing his best with it. But for Naria, the, the team is looking at him. Everybody's looking at him. And he has to prove himself, just to like prove a point, right? He's in a pro team, and he's still lacking like a uh, first or second placement in a tournament. So yeah. All right, so game number four is going to start, and Pavel is actually playing Handlock. It's not a Demon Lock. There is a Sludge Belcher that is an indication we are not going to see any Void Callers. Or Doom Guards. Or Doom Guards, yeah. yeah. For Nairia, well, it's a reverse match. Can Nairia 
I love that he kept the Emperor, because this is the slow matchup usually, if if the opponent didn't hit like a 10-4 Giant, something like that, and you can just sustain that while I break, because it's not enough damage. So I love that he kept the Emperor, because that's one of the key cards to this matchup, because we saw that in the last game, right? Without the Emperor, that would have been possible. That's true. But you also need to draw, you need uh, War Song. So there's a Maybe risk patrons as we've seen from Ostaka before, just mm -hmm. playing those. The key to the victory. One Sludge Belcher. I'm wondering if he's playing two. As I said, I don't really necessarily like the card against patrons, but it might be walking and uh, walking in uh, handlock because you usually want to bait out the patrons and then just clear the board with Hellfire. And we already see Hellfire and the Belcher. In this situation. So do you like the Pavel's hand versus uh, Patron? I think it's not bad. I mean, you played it while I drag. Oh, there's a follow-up on turn 5-6 with the Belcher into Emperor into sealing down uh, the board with the low depth. Yeah, that's very important. Really good if you can stop the Battle Rage or Whirlwind or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Where he's trying to play, especially because Handog is the beatdown in this matchup. Handog is the one who's going to pressure Patron, and he needs to pressure the Patron yep. to, to win. Yeah, that's that's very important aspect of the game to recognize who is the beatdown in the game, so you can uh, just extend your your game plan. If you if you're the beatdown, you want to pressure your opponent. You don't wait for him to like start beating your your character and he, and and he, him pushing you into a defensive position. So uh, it's really important to know that. On the other hand, Nairia's hand is not bad. He has the Taurism that he kept, Warsong, Whirlwind, Execute as well. He decides to, ha to, to deal with the Wallet Drake. He used Shield Slam. So, Shield Slam is not that often used in Patron lists. There are Patron lists that use double Shield Block and Shield Slam, and the lists that uh, just completely ignore the strategy. What do you think about that? There's a lot of wiggle room for, for the deck when it comes to some tech choices. And as I was saw before, I've got an example, use a big game hunter in that slot, most likely, because we're not aware of the whole deck list. But I would just shoot here in the dark that he discarded the combo, the cycles with, with the armor and the potential damage with the shield slam, uh, just in favor of the big game hunter to increase the odds against handlocks. But unfortunately for him, it didn't work out. In this situation, I don't blame Nairia for using the shield slam early on, because you know that the Twilight Drake will be doing so much damage, you won't have armor to actually do it later on. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to use a removal if you if you can. Uh, Pavel went for Lothar, uh, which was also a nice play, because Death Spy was not the best answer to Lothar, and he tried to secure a Thorison uh, on, a, on an empty board, but there is the Death Spy then slam to clear mm -hmm. Thorison. Even though hit a lot of great cards. I mean, what Nairia is looking here for is a Frost Berserker, because he's missing that potential damage. He has the Warsong Commander, the one very important card in the combo, because without the Warsong Commander, you're just at risk of losing the board. If how much, it's, it doesn't matter how much uh, minions on board there will be, you'll just be, you'll be cleared with a Hellfire. A single card will clear every single patron that you will just push on board. So I would, I'm not exactly like sure how, how you play Emperor in this situation because you're hitting only one very, maybe two potential uh, very important cards for the combo and you're still missing the patron, you're still missing the Frozen Berserker, but at the same time you pressure your opponent. So it's, it's good to play the Emperor even like with, with, not, with not exactly all the combo parts. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, well, so you mentioned Frozen Berserker will be the best card that he can get. To, to generate an insane amount of damage. But if he even gets a Patron, he still has double Enrage and he has the, the Whirlwind. So Patrons are going to deal a lot of damage. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. with just the Patrons. Well, he has two Whirlwind effects in the hand, which can be activated most of the time because the Unstable will, will die if your opponent has a minion or if you have double Enrage for it. But usually you don't want to use that on the Patron. But there's a lot of possibilities uh, how to deal the damage to your own minion, and there's also the slam, which can be all, uh, which can be used just to put the unstable goal on one health, and then whirlwind for the second activator right after that. Oh wow! Pavel decides not to deal with Torison, so Naria is getting another tick, and Pavel decides. Oh, there's the floating berserker. There is the floating berserker. How much damage is that? That's oh. four, four, five minions, six minions on board, two whirlwind effects, so that's twelve and. 214. Nah, that's not enough. That's not enough. 
Pavel, Pavel decides that's not enough uh, from Nairia. That's why he went for the Giant and the Drake to pressure even more. And he has Dark Bomb, Hellfire. So Pavel has 12 plus 6. That would be 18 points of damage. It's almost, almost lethal. Mm -hmm. Or is it? Am I wrong? Well, with uh, 6 minions, double Whirlwind is uh, plus... Each hero rage is plus 3. Plus if 12, you plus 2 more. So that's 14. 16, 21 with Florissant and with Inner Rage. Oh, he completely ignored the Emperor. Yeah, yeah Emperor. The Emperor. Emperor is five more damage, and that would be enough from Nyria. Just uh, Inner Raging Emperor, Inner Raging Berserker should be enough. That's exactly 26, right? I stopped counting at some point. There is also a Slam. Yeah, now it's 26, now it's 27. Good All job, right. Nyria. Yeah, Nyria well. spot lethal, and he goes for it. He takes game number four, and we're going to have game number five in this matchup. So Patron kills the Warlock two yep. times in a row. It, that's, that's not supposed to happen, right? <laughs> Most of the time, but you know what's great? We're going to see the mirror match. You like that? I like it. It's like a chess game. It's like move into a move, and... I want to point your attention to the fact that Naria is playing double beacon. Yeah, he has two jokers in his, uh, in his deck. Yeah, he's actually having two jokers in his, uh, in his deck. Yeah. So, I will have to give it to Naria, but there is a lot of important things happening in Handlock versus Handlock. Shadow Flame, Lothab, mm -hmm. Twilight Drake. And there's also one not, um, not a really a clear thing to most of the players, that usually the player that has being, that was being dealt more damage is the one favorite to win because you can drop your Molten Giants and gain Tempo from the Shadow Flame as you mentioned because that's one of the crucial cards in the mirror match but usually we don't see two big game hunters and that can change pace of the game really a lot because in this situation there will be no holding back on the big game hunter not um, maybe you can just use it for the Shadow Flame with no target at all and you still have the, these, the second big game hunter to secure the board uh, later on, like two turns again, uh, after the playing the Shadow Flame, right? So there's a lot of differences when the deck is even like with one card different. And they are different because Nairia is playing the Demon Lock, so he also has the Void Callers versus Pavel's Sludge Belchers. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's game number five for you, Nairia versus Pavel. The winner is going to BlizzCon, and the loser will have one more chance, and it's not eliminated yet. Handlock versus Handro Handlock, mirror match. Demons versus no demons. Double Big Game Hunter versus Sludge Belcher? Uh, well, Belcher is a good counter with a 4 to minion, right? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's true. Both players have a Mountain Giant, which is really important, but at the same time, uh, you can't really gain an advantage of playing a coined out giant, so you can be the first one to play it. But we saw that Nairia did draw the Big Game Hunter. And that's the crucial draw. That's the most important thing right now. Because you can steal a lot of tempo. He has everything. Owl with the bomb, Big Game Hunter. So whatever Pavel does is going to be countered. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now Pavel, well, he has to play something. Or tap and coin with no real effect. Or can also pass. play, well, he can coin out Twilight Drake, right? But if then you coin he can out Twilight Drake, you will not be able to yes. play Giant effectively. So mm -hmm. just pass, don't do anything, because if you tap, you will overdraw. Oh wow, two big game hunters. I don't see how oh, this wow, is going to work. Oh wow, that's a big game hunter for Pavel. Well, this will go back and forth. Yeah, and that's why I love this matchup, you know. It's like, you can never really expect what's going to happen. That top deck, man. It's magical. And he probably plays only one. But we can't be sure. Maybe he has another one as yeah, well. Maybe. Who knows? Emperor for 10 6 for Nairia will be impressive. Two big game hunters for each for two mana. Wow. As a half a giant. Yeah, half there is. A giant. But Pavel is the one having tempo, so he's going with this, this giant. I hope he's going to survive. Nairia has again two silence in his opening hand, but no mortal coils. Is he even playing mortal coils? Okay. Normally you do. I haven't seen any, but maybe he cut mortal calls for the big and hunter. Well, you don't have to cut something if you want to play two of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good point. You can't really play Taurus on here. You just need to kill the no, giant. Unfortunately, you don't. You have to play the big and hunter, but that's not 
that doesn't sound so bad, you know. You just play a minion and kill your opponent's big threat. Oh, that sounds like a good deal to me. What do you think about 2-3 from Pavel? I like it. It's going to contest Picking Hunter because you, you can't assume there is one coming. Mm -hmm. I don't blame him for using the Sunfield Protector. It's, a, it's just a proactive move to deal with the Big Game Hunters because I'm sure Pavel knows that there, there are two, two of those. So there's a big chance that this giant has no effect on the board. And you can reset the board by using your Sunfield Protector. Staria takes his time because you always want to think maybe Torison is the play. It will change the game if if you play Torison, but Viking Hunter is just too good in this situation. Anyway. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. There is the Doctor Boom from Pop. And Doctor Boom is green after the coin, and yeah, he's a goblin too, so he's green twice. So we play it always. What do you think about those Molten Giants for Pavel? Are they good right now, or are they, are they just sitting in his head and he can't do anything? I, there might be a big impact. Uh, if Pavel draws a Shadow Flame, that, this might be very important for the game. I mean, it's, oh, it's also interesting that probably on Neria is playing Jaraxxus in this matchup. So, um, by the way, I really like this trade because you, you know, normally someone would use the bomb first on the 4 1 and maybe miss the damage on the big game hunter, right? And that would be really awkward. But what I want to say is that Jaraxxus is a very important card in this matchup because it can play, uh, it can result in having a lot of more, a lot more threats in this board than, you, than your opponent has. And you can deal with the 6 6. Like with ease. Yeah, that's true. Like mostly this matchup comes down to uh, Fred answer, Fred answer, Fred answer, and then somebody drops your axes and there is like, hey, I use all the threads and the giants, what do I do now? It's the 90s or what? There's a Siphon Soul here. There's, well, it is a handlock with Belchers, so you know, Siphon Soul is something you can still play as a one off. If there would be a Lero Jenkins and PO, I would just. <laughs> this would just blow my mind. And this is not this kind of deck, but <laughs> I think Siphon Soul has, has a place in a uh, handlock list. But imagine the Handlock still would have that combo. 20 damage on turn 10. It's a surprise, and, it, and you know, if you can uh, advance the top 4 in the back of Leroy, Faceless, Torison, that's not bad. Double Hellfire, that's 6 damage, can clear, well, everything, but it kill all, also your Giant, so you don't want to exactly do this. I think you just play Siphon Soul, right, and kill the 5-11. I mean... Mm. If you Siphon the 5-11, you probably have to attack into the 4-5 and what so even you want you? to do like trade first for the Void Caller and then see what's happening because if there would be a Malganis, you probably want to Siphon kill it. Malganis, yeah. yeah. But do you even attack? You don't really have an answer. Like, okay, so we have the Siphon Soul, but nothing else. Rosefort. Oh, that's actually not that bad. I mean, you have to Siphon Soul it, but maybe not this turn if you don't plan on using the Siphon Soul right now. Do you, do you really? Like, you always like, have a silence as well, possibly. The second silence of the deck. For the Twilight Rig? Um, for both, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, if you silence the Twilight Rig, you deal more damage, right? So, yeah. But he didn't... That, that, that's the reason why he tapped first. He just wanted to get that silence, which would result in a different plan. Alright, he didn't get it. So, uh, for Nairia... I think he just dropped Molten Giant. Molten Giant, sorry. And present a really big threat. You, you, you trade first because you want to avoid the pesky Shadow Flame. It's funny how you have to play around Moltens yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But with double Hellfire... There's no way of clearing the Giant. So that's a problem. But you can just drop um, the Belcher to avoid a lot of damage to your face. And this also do doesn't necessarily telegraph a Molten Giant turn. Or a second power, Hellfire. Right? Or a second Hellfire also, yes. So I wouldn't blame him for using the Belcher here. Or just one of them. But I favor the Belcher. It's really interesting how they uh, trade card for card. There's action oh. reaction. There's the Malganis. There is a Malganis, but is, is it the best in this situation? No, 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 no. There's, but there's a really huge to know that you have him like, in your hand because it, it changes a lot when it comes to potential damage. All right, Malganis oh, with Nairia. And the silence, he goes for the damage. If there is a way to Shadow Flame, nope. that would be huge. But 
Well, there's a way to kill the Malkanis, and that's from the, so the, this turn will probably will be very similar to what we just saw. So Hellfire, Slide Vulture, and that's it. Hellfire and Belcher. And with that, that will be 17 health from pa for Pavel. If, if Neria will draw a Dark Bomb, that's game. No, oh, sorry, one off lethal. Yeah, one off. So we need no, to no, defend no, of Argus. He will be at 17, so he, it will be lethal. Because there's the Doomguard for 7 damage. For so 16 damage from Malganus because there's the second Owl to silence the Belcher. So he just needs a damage. Slot. Yeah, one damage. Like turn. Defender of Argus. And he will have and... that. Shut of Flame. Um, Shut of Flame is not enough. Nope. But the thing is, like, you have Lotha. So you can still maybe develop the board and play Lotha. Then you defend just... though, one turn too late. But yeah, please go on. Yeah, so I mean, like, you can kill Belcher. And then if you love up and have an, a big enough board to, to finish the game next turn, mm -hmm. you'll be in a great position. You will not expect a Shadow Flame. If you don't attack face with Morganis, 17 should be enough to, to finish the game for the next turn. And there is no way you're going to see a Shadow Flame into anything after the love up. Yeah, but there's a chance that your opponent will just tone up. And you might have a problem with going through that, right? Because you used both of the big game hunters. You have the Owl still. So maybe you just... So you're uh, saying he will not use it this turn? Well, you kind of have to. Yeah, I think you have to, so... It also comes down, as you said, but if this is going to face... I really love this. I mean, he's not dealing the face damage, because the one way you can lose this game is if you deal too much damage to your opponent and he just drops Molten Molten, Shadow Flame Taunt, and you're like, oh, well, I guess I lose because I have no option to deal that much damage That's unless true. I Shadow Flame my own Giant and I don't have Jaraxxus anymore. Well, there was no option for Shadow Flame in Molten's, but there is the Mordekai for six. And this is a good deal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hellfire! And that's... Seven plus eight. Almost. 15. Can you play Defender Vargas? Not really. Can you maybe put Havel into Hellfire range? No, you can't, because if you play Doomguard, you can actually get Hellfire discarded. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what do you really do, being Naria? Well, you can just play Molten Giant, and that's it. Right? Do you? Molten should be fine. You've seen Big Game Hunter, you've seen Siphon, so... You don't have. You don't necessarily have to um, taunt it up. You can just taunt up uh, Lotep and Owl, and just go. I suppose aggressively. You can't really go for face unless you just ignore Molden's. I like trading. Wow. I like okay, trading. Okay, another turn of trading, being super passive, and until you get the lethal. Yeah, but abs that's absolutely because of the Molten Giants. He doesn't want to attack face because he wants to keep Pavel on, on mm -hmm. 17. And now we see Neria using some emotes to, you know, push Pavel into the, uh, to the edge. <laughs> Neria is doing uh, so weird faces. Impossible. But he is so close. That's he, very close. He knows he almost has the series, even though he was losing. The patron, man. The patron magic. We, we talked about how Patron wasn't winning, and then it started winning. Suddenly, just <laughs> took the game. Yep. Do you see uh, anything for Pavel to, su to survive here? Uh, it's awful. <laughs> it is really, it's really awful. I think you have to go for a def no. super defense. No top givers, so you just have to heal. Yeah. I would do Maybe you should go for loaded, but I'm... Yeah. That's, uh, like, he's missing one damage again, because it's 16 damage on board. And then he has eight in hand. Yeah. So it's 24. That's a lot for handlock. Just 24 damage out of nowhere. Well, he has a giant and a low tip in the deck. So yeah, uh, on the board. So yeah. So Most what do you do? Do you continue clearing? Uh, Attack with the... That was really awkward. <laughs> but I think you can just mortal coil the remains of the healbot. Yeah, attack with a 2-3, coil that, probably attack with the giant at the 4-8. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great trade. The problem is, your opponent might eventually draw into that Shadow Flame and use a Ancient Watcher just to clear. Uh, that's not a great draw at all. I yes. mean, he can... Wait. He used he Double Silence use, already. Uh, he can use Ancient Watcher into Shadow Flame. Deal for damage. Uh, nah, that doesn't change. Well... This changes the fact that the giant will be undamaged. 
so he will not be afraid of the Ancient Watcher Shadow Flame coming from the second side. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely safe here to attack with the with the giant to the face. I like that. That's that's even better because he counted up the, the Watcher, so he has the, the big board that's still that should be lethal next turn. With 13 plus 8 is 21. Yep. There's uh, a heal though. So that that looks like a very harsh situation for Pavel. Yeah, Noria is uh, doing a great job with like putting Pavel in a situation where he can't play Molten Giants really, and he can die next turn, so he has to heal himself, making his Molten Giants even worse. So he's grinding him out. Absolutely. And, well, Pavel can't really do much. He yes. tried to taunt up, maybe, Defender of Argus, Ancient Watcher. Six, uh, six mana. So, maybe Lotheb instead? Lotheb and Defender of Argus, it buys him some time, yeah. Or just Lotep and mm, Hillbot, because that buys you more time. Well, he wants to draw a Shadow Flame, and he wants to be low enough to play a Molten Giant and Shadow Flame. That would be a huge turn. So, can he afford to tap? Well, 25. Again. Right, yeah, that's 11, that's 13, Plus 18, eight. 21. Yeah, that's all done. So, still 4 damage off. Oh, and there is Maria. Hellfire. Well, the the Lothab actually oh. steals the Hellfire anyway. Look at that. Yeah, it, it will be it will be lethal if not for Lothab. But Naria knows that there's no more healing in Pavel's deck uh, unless he plays the Draxus himself. He goes like super aggressively now, and he is sure that he can deliver the end of the game with Hellfire and Dark Bomb. Then. Yeah, that's the correct but move, but the problem is that's a really risky one. <laughs> well, he can Shadow Flame the 4-5, uh, use it to free. Well, actually, he can Shadow Flame the 3-3. Free -free. Attack mm -hmm. with the 3-3. Free -free. have the taunt, uh, and that will be 22. Minus 8 is 14 points of health. So Molten Giants are a possibility. That's the problem. Like Even if he goes the aggressive uh, route right now, with uh, so much damage in hand, it's still possible that the Molten Giants are getting played with the Fender Vargas. So he needs to figure out the, the exact amount of life, which will be awkward for Pavel. So he can't go with double Molten in the Tone Wall. This is probably also why he did Sacrifice Ancient Watcher, is it? Is it? Yeah, and he ha has an attack with the Heal Bot. Yeah. And there is Sunfury Protector. This means that Owl and Sunfury? Oh, Owl and uh, the Fender Vargas, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, he set up as a big minion and. He saw Shadow Flame, right? And this so means it's over because with the free free attack and then Hellfire, that's 11 mm -hmm. damage to face, four remaining with the Doomer attack and Dark Bomb, Nerea will be able to seal the game. So that's the Hellfire and the Dark Bomb to the face, Giant attack, and on the back of the Doom Guard, he's advancing to the top four and secures the spot at this point. Congrats, Nerea. You've done it. You've yeah, done it, it, man. Second try, but you got it. Two tries. Nice. But Pavel is not eliminated yet. Pavel is still fighting. Pavel uh, yep. has to win his next match to qualify, so he still has a chance. Yep, that's true. And uh, Pavel, um, I'm just hoping that he is not crushed by this defeat and he'll just, you know, pick up the pieces and go. Such an amazing match. Rachel, let's hear from our winners. I had to jump right up here because I wanted to get your, your raw emotions here as you win. And what I saw was an amazing display of... of Sportsmanship. You're talking with Pavel. You guys are chatting. What did you talk about after the matches? Uh, I talked about that I misplayed the last game. I didn't Argus my giant, so I would have a little like three turns earlier or four turns earlier. So I, I, I'm glad that it turned around into my favorite still. And yeah, who misplays that wins. Yeah. Sometimes the misplays still win and. That didn't stop you at all on the road to BlizzCon because you are our second qualified player. You will be going all the way to BlizzCon of the Hearthstone World Championships. I see that makes you very happy. Of course. It's uh, my first BlizzCon and uh, being uh, at the ch European Championship twice and made it second time, it's even more pleasure than uh, like be f first time and qualified first time. It's that, that tantric style. So you came back that second time and Nuria, this is a huge win for you because all year long you've been doing absolutely fantastic, but now you finally have the results. So is this, is this uh, some bragging rights? You get to go back to your team and, and get some big hugs for this one? 
Yeah, hugs with Savish. I wanted to ask you, what was it like to have your, your deciding match be a Warlock Mirror? Uh, I'm very ha I was very happy uh, to win uh, Patron versus uh, Warlock, because in Mirror my deck is very good. I have double uh, BGH, double Owl, uh, and especially he plays classic Handlock, so it's even... Uh, it's less harder, because I can push for damage and finish like I did uh, with Doomguard for the burst. Well, you did finish very well. You are our qualified player, but we still have a little bit of competition left for you because we still need to uh, decide our European Hearthstone champion. So, oh, did, you, did I just inform you of that? Was this the first you heard of that? Yeah. European Championship, resident sleeper. <laughs> well, now you don't get to go and relax. You have to go back and study. So what's the rest of the day? What's the rest of the weekend look like for you? What? What, does, uh, what do you do for the rest of the weekend now? Because the finals match is tomorrow and the semifinals is later on tonight. I guess play Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> you and everybody else in here. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations once again. Why don't we give it up for our second qualifier for BlizzCon, Nuria. And I'm going to give it back to the casters. What an awesome interview, man. That was great. I yeah, loved it. it I awesome. love honest <laughs> interviews as well. <laughs> Nyria, congratulations to the second player to go to BlizzCon. What a great series. Very back and forth. I know he was mentioning that he was getting a hug from Savitz, and definitely so. Savitz actually was so hyped during the patron versus Warlock. He jumped out of his seat and fist pumped and yelled uh, on behalf of his teammate. It was a very emotional moment for him. A uh, very emotional moment for some of the people who've been watching since last year as well, as uh, Nyria's struggles have ended, at least for now. He's going to BlizzCon. We'll see how well he does in the rest of the bracket. Absolutely. It was such a crazy match. Even though the decks, we, we know about them and how they look like, there, were, there, there was a lot of surprises. Double Beacon Hunter for the Demon Handlock, uh, Belchers, and Siphon Soul for yeah. the Standard Handlock. And the Leroy that, didn't, that wasn't drawn. The Leroy that was right. never shown, yeah. yeah. Uh, at least so the saying goes, right? Because of the old school throwback handlock. Uh, cool stuff, although, like you said, Powell's not eliminating. He gets another chance through the lower bracket. And I was actually able to follow a little bit of it. Uh, Hoy did play against Maverick, mm -hmm. and Hoy was able to win, which means Maverick's oh, eliminated. Oh, oh. And we never got a chance to see him on stage. And of course, uh, Rip Frodan predictions. I thought Maverick uh, would be one of the candidates, maybe even the finals of the European Championship. I heard the same. What, what, what happened? My prediction too? Yeah, yeah, that was, was, that, was that your prediction? Yeah. My prediction was that Maverick will be actually uh, like advancing from the group together with Ties. Uh, but you said that he's, he brought a different lineup than usual. Yeah, right? he, he brought a mage, which unfortunately it looks like it didn't work out. I, I didn't get to see the games exactly, I just know the results. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I, 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 I want to know what happened, but I do feel like a lot of players who brought mage have regretted it. For example, Firebat, uh, our current reigning world champion, but soon to be dethroned because he got eliminated at the last stage before uh, hitting the regionals. He brought mage and he was like, yeah, I shouldn't have brought mage. <laughs> yeah, he was bad, man. But it does feel a little bit bad, but uh, you know, at the same time, some of these players got really far. They should be proud of their accomplishments. But for someone like Maverick's caliber, it's also kind of a sting because he comes in as the number one seed for all of Europe. Every single season since January, he's hit top 20 ranked or higher. Uh, so a job well done to him, but looks like the moment does belong to Hoy. That means he also plays his teammate again, Oskaka, for a decider match. So Oskaka should be too. happy. Oskaka should be happy with his lineup. Just yeah, uh, for sure. Lineup prepared specifically to win versus Hoy. <laughs> he wins versus Hoy, and then he has to face Hoy again. That's right. Well, I mean, that's, that's ultimately what it is, because uh, at this point, the decider match is almost as good as the first seed in the group. You just you mm -hmm. move on, and you still play into the single elimination bracket, which we'll be playing throughout the rest of the day. Uh, we're going to be determining two semifinalists uh, into the grand finals to wrap up day number one, but we're only about halfway through. We've got plenty of more Hearthstone action here in Prague, Czech Republic, so stay tuned. We'll be right back.